This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. So, do you ever find that uh, you look at where you're at in life and then you judge where you are compared to your contemporaries? Great example of this would be your high school reunion. You know, you go after 10 years and uh, some people are... Well, kind of moping about in the foothills of life. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's some of your classmates. But some folks are, like I said, they didn't exactly go with the gusto when they left high school. They maybe meandered around, went in and out of a couple of jobs, thought about going to college. And essentially, they're still living on futons and eating off of milk crates and things like that. Whereas by 10 years in, some people went straight to college, then straight to graduate school, then straight into a job that paid them a whole bunch of money. They've got a wife that they met in their sophomore year of college. They waited until they both graduated. And then when they landed the dream jobs, right away, they got to work on a family. And so there they are, multiple degrees after 10 years out of high school, a job, a family, one, maybe two little gorgeous kids, and, well, they seem to have it all together, don't they? Especially when you compare it to other folks. Maybe you, who, eh, not quite sure. Like I said, moping about through the foothills of life, not sure where you're going, not sure what you're doing, but sure that when you stack your life up against theirs, this little picket-fenced life, picket-fenced life, it doesn't look so great that you're still off and on uh, living with roommates, living with your parents, and your furniture, like I said, comprises mostly of futons and milk crates. And you stack those two lives up against each other, and it seems like one person is coming out the clear victor. When I first started in radio, I was late to the game. I really was. Like, there were people in there that had been doing radio since high school when I first started. But I knew I needed a job. I was 23, 24 years old. My band was over. I left pretty much before high school ended to go on tour. I hadn't gone to college because, well, that scholarship that I got offered to Tufts, I was like, oh, mm, yeah, Tufts wants to give me a scholarship, but Sony wants to give me a tour bus. I'm going to go with a tour bus. And I had a great old time. Went around the world, made records. The only downside of the whole situation was at 24 years old, my resume said lead singer in a band, and I didn't even have a band anymore. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do, but I knew it was probably something media related, so I tried to get a job in radio. And the only reason I wound up in radio was because radio was the only person that, radio was the only thing that got back to me. Jobs in media and advertising and television and all the about nothing. Zip, zing, nada. But I got two crappy air shifts a week. Overnight air shifts on two different radio stations. One on Sirius XM when Sirius XM had literally nobody listening to it. And the other one on a station in Houston called The Buzz. And I had two crappy air shifts a week. Overnights. Started late. And there were people my age who had been doing it for the last 10 years, it seemed. They started interning in high school. And here I was, mid-20s, not really sure exactly what I'm doing with myself, making $12 an hour to work a grand total of about 10 hours a week. And trying to figure out how I was going to eke a living and a career out of that. And it didn't look good, but I had no other option, so I went for it. <clears throat> And I remember one of my contemporaries was this guy who just seemed like he was fast-tracked for success. He'd been at it for a long time. He had a rabid following in this town that we were on in. And I was just like, damn, I'll never catch up to that dude. And it's not like I'm catching up to anybody. It wasn't like I was pitting my career against his. <laughs> you should note the sarcastic air quotes I'm putting around the word career at the moment. But... 
it had to be said when I looked at his life and looked at mine and looked at the fact that he was able to talk on the radio and uh, turn those words into money that he used to do very basic, simple things that I couldn't do, like eat, pay rent, stuff like that. I was like, I, I'm never, never going to get there. Where am I? And a lot of people feel that way uh, when they're, you know, living on the futon, going to the 10th high school reunion, 10 year high school reunion, and, and looking at where their friends with multiple degrees and multiple kids and multiple picket fences around their cute little houses are in life you feel at a distinct disadvantage because you moped around you didn't go with the gusto you didn't make a plan and go for it cut to a few years later that guy i was working with well he hit a bump in the road he uh <laughs> dropped an f-bomb on the air mm, yeah whoops yet yeah, still kept his job it was weird but it showed me that, uh, well, even when you're in a great position, you can F it up. And it was only a matter of time before he F'd it up again. And when that happened, I was given his job. I kind of became him. And he had dreams and aspirations of becoming this guy that programs a radio station. And I think he uh, wound up being a strip club DJ right after that. I don't know exactly what happened to him for the next couple of years. I lost track of him. But I know that right now, I'm all the places he wanted to be. He's clawed his way back, and he's all the places he wanted to be, too. But I thought I was in such a deficit compared to this guy. And it doesn't matter as long as you keep your head down and work. It doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Confucius. It just blew you away. I'm ripping you up, tearing you down, checking it out. Gonna be making a kick, cause that's what I am all about. I got clout, and I don't have to shout it, but I will, cause I can help that I am buzzing about it. Check what I say, I only do it my way. Check what I say, I only do it my way. That's Say that I am giving it all that I got just to make you slam. I said, What sham? There ain't no sham. Just listen to your feet from the fat fucking jam. My oh my, I gotta say, I defy anybody to be asking me the reason why I do what I do with this fucking fat crew. You hear it now, and it's gotta be getting through to you. Pumping it up just a little bit more, cuz now is the time that I eat in the score. So just look around, there's no calm to be found. It's your move to the sound of the jam, and you slam it up, play. I only do it my way. Robertson, <laughs> Pat Robertson's latest, uh, well, he's still bringing the crazy. Apparently, if you post a picture of your family on Facebook, it opens it up so evil covens of witches can curse you and your family. It's true. It's a thing. I mean, it's not true. It's not a thing, but it's true. And it's a thing that Pat Robertson said that he also said that, uh, 
fighting climate change will destroy America. Yep. We'll get into uh, how Pat Robertson is nothing if not consistent when it comes to bringing the aforementioned crazy in a little bit right now, though. Let's check in with Super. (laughs) Oh, God. Picture of health and vitality. Let's check in with Super Producer to the Stars, Barry Funkhauser. You're 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 right over there? Want me to call someone? It's like a layer of snot that won't sort of like clear out from the top of my chest to the back of my throat. You ever have that? It's just like... Tasty. Yeah. I think it's allergies. I'm not sure what it is. It's either allergies or I'm dying. So there's that. Mm. Everybody enjoy what might be my last show. Well, we're all kind of dying, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, well, wasn't it Iron Maiden who said, as soon as we're born, we're dying? Sure. I, I don't think they I'll, came up with I'll that put little Iron observation. Maiden on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they came up with that little observation, but they popularized it with their song. So, uh, oh, God. It's weird. Some uh, some research was done on me at one of the radio stations I worked for once, and they're like, AD burps a lot on the air. At first it was cute, now it's gross. And uh, the thing is, I- I'm not trying to be cute, nor am I trying to be gross. It's uh, But when allergy season hits and you do the coughing and the hacking, and-, and your windpipe starts moving up and down, whether you like it or not, it traps a certain amount of air, which could lead to uh, a certain amount of belching. So, know that um, I- if I do belch continuously throughout the, cur- the course of this broadcast, it's not because I think it's charming. The first couple of times it is, but uh, it actually is sort of like a, a physical thing. And I could, uh, I could turn, I, I could turn the microphone off when I needed to do it, or, or I could be real with you. And I think you'd rather I be real with you, wouldn't you? I know Funkhauser would. He loves it when I hack, cough, sneeze, belch, and fart on the air. Yes, yes. I don't think I've ever farted on the air. Well, I mean, we probably couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it at least. Uh yeah. I, I try not to fart in the studio. It's just... Well, there was one time where I was working nights and I was, like, really trying to brew one up. I was like, maybe I can brew one up that has enough hang time so that the morning show smells it <laughs> when they come in the next day. But uh, <laughs> it didn't it didn't work out. Uh, but I try not to, uh, you know, like, the, the studios are pretty airtight. And um, I don't know. Do you have that friend, Funkhauser? And if you don't have that friend, it means you are that friend who will... D- d- you ever had one of those friends that will fart on their hand and then smell it? Uh, I am that friend. You are that friend? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, no, I've never been... Uh, never been. Uh, I've never been stoked about the uh, smell of my own gassy secretions. Well, isn't it healthy, though, to sniff it out? Make sure it's, you know, the right, the right smell? Not the... Ooh, that's not good. You know what? I, I uh, really. What's uh, what's not what's not good? Like how can you what? <laughs> what what? I don't know. It's always okay. Been not. It's never been let, alarming. Let, 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 let me let me pose a hypothetical situation for you then, Funkhauser. You fart on your hand. You lift your hand that you just farted on up to your nose and sniff it. All of a sudden, you're alarmed and concerned. What is the cause of that alarm and concern? <laughs> a a foreign smell, not you know, not normal. I think that would be it, but, uh, you know, on second thought, I don't know how that, uh, somebody told me when I was a kid, you're supposed to do it so it's healthy. It's healthy to, to know what you, if you're all right, you know, if you're Was this right. person someone you caught in the act of doing it? <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. Yeah. I don't remember the, I was when I was the wee not funk. something, mm, I, I never, uh, that one never got the, No. No, never heard that one in health class. You should smell your farts to make sure everything's okay in the gastrointestinal tract. I, I think what happened was you caught somebody smelling their farts, and they're like, oh, yeah, just uh, this is good for your health. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. Man, now you need to go back and rethink a lot of time. A lot of stuff, yeah. Well, uh, you ponder that <laughs> while we go over the news. Well, what's going on in the world? You just be lucky we're in different studios. <laughs> uh, Chelsea Handler tweeted a topless Mardi Gras photo. Did you see it? Y- yeah, yeah, partly to create awareness of the importance of free speech, but mostly to create awareness of Chelsea Handler. Yeah, topless Mardi Gras photo of Chelsea Handler, which is great news for the five people on Earth who still had not seen Chelsea Handler's breasts. We were talking about this a little bit yesterday on the show. You know that whole iCloud hack, the uh, the fappening where pictures of Kate Upton and a bunch of other people who I can't remember right now because I was too lo- busy looking at the news. 